Oblivions. Welcome to show. I am Clint, and I am here with... Devo. But not... The Gooch. Still out of commission. Still a fantastic week with no Gooch. <laughs> you know, and the funny thing is, in our, our previous podcast iteration, Devin was just so excited when the Gooch wasn't around. Yeah. Just loved to just talk about him and just, you know, communicate with him through the internets and everything and hopefully he might hear it later but knowing that he probably won't so that we can say whatever the hell we wanted to say about him i think it's because there was a couple times where i wasn't there and, and he took his jabs at me so it's like all right you know what? he took the liberties <laughs> yeah now it's my turn my house viva aqui <laughs> no, i don't know oh uh, i bet you people don't know what the hell is that shit's from it's no, great it's all right so speaking of that time period back to the 80s we'll yeah. take y'all back to the 80s and you know i want to start this off with probably I don't know if it's the scariest thing I ever saw as a kid, but it's one of the things that I remember being scared of yeah. when I was a little kid. And I remember, you know, I mean, this was one of those movies that was always on TV. So, and, okay. and, and But it was never one of those movies that, like, it was edited. So you basically, if you watched it on TV, you okay. saw everything that was in the movie. Okay. It was, nothing was taken out. Uh, like, you know, we mentioned Alien before. Like, a lot of the stuff was taken out because it was yeah. so graphic. Yeah. Okay, so when I saw this movie... It starts with the Columbia Pictures uh, lady up, yeah. up, up the steps. And it's like this thing where it's got these steps and her, her dress flows off of it and it's golden. Yeah, but yeah. it was like this scary, spooky version of it. And it yeah. had this like this different sound to it even. Yeah. And the light comes down and then um, it starts in the library. Yeah. And, you know, they go into the library. And I always remember being a little bit afraid of like dark libraries like that. Okay. Like that were in these sort of like you know, Greco-Roman design buildings. Yeah. And, you know, they go and they see, they and they have the scary music and they go and they, they talk to the, the, the librarian and they go into the area where there's all the cards, mm -hmm. the, the catalog cards, and they're all jumped out and there's ectoplasm everywhere, which we're definitely going to talk about later on. The actual ectoplasm yeah. itself. Cards just shooting out. Yes. and so Drawers opening up. Drawers opening up and they go by and, and then I remember, and you know, it's just one of those things that you always think of whenever you go to a library after that. Yeah. And then they see her. And they're like, yeah, I think you should talk to her. I think you should say something. He said, like, well, I'm not going to say anything. What are you going to do? I'm not going to say anything. Said, no, 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 go talk to her. Go talk to her. And, and then, and of course, Peter Bankman takes it upon himself. He's a ladies' man. He can talk to any woman, right? <laughs> and so he goes and talks to her. And then she comes up. <laughs> but he walks up and he's like, hi. Hi. <laughs> Where are you from originally? <laughs> and so then... She comes out, and when she comes out, it's like full on. I mean, obviously, this is like a. I think it's a person dressed up. Like you know, is it a person dressed up or is it like it's like a. So the the, the it's like when a, when she's reading like the book. Doll it's, it, well, when puppet? she's reading the book, it's it's a person dressed up. Yeah. But then when it becomes it's a puppet. It changes form. It's a puppet. And when that puppet came out, the way that puppet, like just like the whole build up to it, and then when you finally get the whole moment where the puppet comes out, yeah. I and mean, I remember I used to have to close my eyes. Oh, I did the same thing. It, exactly right. But you love the movie and you love that part. And then yeah. it wasn't until it got a little bit older, so you could actually watch it and just see how, like, I mean, at the time it's different because the special effects, you know, that was the best that you could get at the time, and that was the best that we had seen. It's like going back to the 1950s and watching a horror movie is like way different than watching a modern right, horror movie. Yeah. So at the time, that was the best you're going to get, the scariest thing that you could get. And I just remember being really scared of that movie. Yeah. But ultimately became, you know, one of the movies that shaped my youth, and that's Ghostbusters. Yeah. It's it, it one of my probably, actually no, I, it is guaranteed my all time favorite comedy movie. Really? Yeah. It's funny I, that I, you mentioned that because IGN, back in 2005, it was voted the greatest comedy ever. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the, the very few comedies. Like, I love Spaceballs, but I will go back and watch Ghostbusters. Like, any anytime like, I flip through and it's on TV, I'll definitely take the time to make sure I watch, you know, whatever part it's from. And it's just... Iconic there's, every, there's there, To me personally, there's nothing about that movie that I don't like. And it's it's hilarious. It's got some cool science fiction stuff. It's got, uh, I mean, ghosts uh, at the time. Sigourney Weaver was being, uh, you know, Dana Barrett. Just <laughs> that, fine her, as hell. And, and as we mentioned before, in your opinion, her hottest iteration, her hottest appearance on Zool. Film? Is Zool? Yeah. Well, I don't know. She's she not was Zool. Not... She's, uh, the, she's the gatekeeper. No, she's no, the she key was master. Zool. No, she's the key master. So I think. So, Goes or the Gozerian is the other chick. Yeah, but Zool, I think, is the original is demon. No. 
the Zool, I think Zool the, is the original demon that comes out. So remember oh, the when, dog, when the dog demon? Yeah, Zool. The, the original hell. Like you showed in the on your Instagram, yeah. not too long ago. Is yeah. that Zool? I'm pretty sure that's Zool. Okay, so that was Zool. Yeah. Okay, so okay. like when she's like when she's uh, uh, the thing that comes out of her kitchen or her fridge, uh -huh. I think that's Zool. Because Zool's Zool, coming from Zool the other. overtakes her. Yes, and uh, somehow and Moranis as well. Yes. So, but it's two dogs. Actually, yeah, there were two dogs. So I don't know who I don't know if Zool's actually in the movie. Cause the, cause the dog that gets her from the fridge must be the gatekeeper. And remember when they had that scene where they opened up the fridge and you saw like that Egyptian looking the pyramid. Scenery? There were two there, if I'm not mistaken. Was there one on the one on the period and then one that came out at her? Yeah, so there probably. was even two dogs then. Yeah, so then one's the gatekeeper, one's the key master, and the gatekeeper is has to be the dog that gets her, and then the dog that gets Lewis is the key master. He was definitely, and they had, were like destined to like consummate their love and create. The Gozerian. Goes the Gozer, the Gozerian. The Gozerian. Yes. If Goes I'm not traveler. mistaken. Or, yeah, they're like, the yeah, whatever. The Them unified brought him in. Well, I think it was like, I don't, I don't know. Origi interestingly enough, <laughs> Goes of the Gozerian originally was supposed to be Paul Rubens in a business suit. <laughs> yeah? You mean Pee Wee? Yes. That's awesome. Not that woman, but I guess he couldn't do it, and they, they changed their mind. Thankfully, huh. because that chick was like kind of scary, kind of hot in a kind of weird way, right? I mean, you. Yeah. The body. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's enough. Aim for the flat top. Uh, <laughs> uh, so let me just talk about the origins of this film yeah. originally here. And so the film was originally designed to be a starring vehicle for Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi. Yeah. Uh, you know, they came from Saturday Night Live, and this was, you know, they had an up and Saturday Night Live was huge, and that was the era, like the golden generation of Saturday Night Live with John Candy and Eddie Murphy, who also both were initially supposed to be the two gentlemen that rounded out the cast. Okay. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And interestingly enough, John Candy was actually supposed to be Lewis Tully. Yeah. And Lewis Tully was supposed to be, like, I don't know if he was supposed to be one of the Ghostbusters, but he was supposed to be a prominent character in the story. Yeah. And uh, obviously, Winston was supposed to be a Murphy, but Winston was actually supposed to, and this was, interestingly enough, this was the character that was first pitched to Ernie Hudson, which made him take the role and actually take half his, take a half of his normal salary to be in the movie because Winston was supposed to have a more major role and he was supposed to be an ex-Air Force def demolitions expert. Oh, damn. But they changed the... the you know, the bigwigs made him change the script at the last moment to make Bill Murray's character more, pr more prominent. Yeah. And so... What uh, so my first question is what do you think of what do you think the movie would have been if they would have had those four OG guys in there Eddie Murphy for I mean, Christ's sake I mean he did Beverly Hills Cop instead of doing this movie so yeah. it worked out well for him but right still. I mean it's I mean it's obviously going to be a completely different movie it's not going to be the same movie that we know because Eddie Murphy is going to be a major character and then John maybe Candy, even the main character and then Jim Belushi it's like it's it the, that's the whole comedic makeup would just be absolutely different now whether because one thing that I love about Ghostbusters is it has a serious funny, comedic, dark tone to it. And when, uh, I mean... It's almost like it's it's funny, but then when the serious things happen, they're, like, really serious. Yeah. That like, it's almost like it makes the... It, like, snaps those characters in from comedy to, like, seriousness. Yeah, Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, comedians. Harold Ramis at the time, I, I mean... He's not a comedian. He, he was in... Screenwriter. He, he, yeah, and he was in Stripes, but... He wasn't like I personally never saw him even afterwards. Like I mean, he had bit roles here and there, but I never viewed him as a comedian. I He's mean, he not, could play funny parts, but I mean, he, the th the thing with him was is he wasn't really originally supposed to even be in the movie. He was just helping Dan Aykroyd write the movie, yeah. which is what he did. And you know, obviously, when John Belushi died and John Candy didn't agree to be in the film, well, you know, he uh, ended up being in the movie. Yeah. But you know, if you notice, he never really was not the one cracking jokes. He was the serious character. I mean, he like. Okay, yeah, he wasn't cracking jokes, but he was part of the jokes. Oh, for sure, for and sure. And like even sure. with Ernie Hudson, like Her Ernie Hudson wasn't like, as far as I know, a comedian and, and really known for comedic roles and stuff like that. So no. the fact that you've got the two comedians and the two grounded players, I think, allowed everybody to play very well off each other. Mm -hmm. If you would have had just an entire team that's just all comedians, which is, <laughs> and we'll get to it later, <laughs> which is what's going to be coming up in 2016, I think it's going to be a completely different movie. Mm. But I. It's hard to say if it would be a better movie or not, you know, because we'll, we're obviously never going to know. I think it would. It sounds like with those players it had the potential to be a amazing com uh, comedy movie. And I think this Eddie Murphy dynamic would have made the movie completely different because it would have been an Eddie Murphy vehicle. vehicle. Yeah, and it would just. And they may have made more movies 
but it would have been an Eddie Murphy movie eventually. Yeah. Maybe not the first one, but by the time he made that, by the time they would have made the second one, he was like the biggest star, one of the biggest stars in Hollywood. Yeah. And so, you know, obviously you want Eddie Murphy in those, but it didn't turn out that way. But no. it did, the movie did was one, considered one of the most successful comedic films of the 1980s. Yeah. It's, regardless. Yeah. Um, and so this, you know, this I this whole idea of the Ghostbusters itself, yeah, interestingly enough, comes from a Disney short called Lonesome Ghosts. Okay, and um, and another another short that they combined the name. It was something Busters. I forget what it was, but in and, and interestingly enough, that term "I ain't scared of no ghosts" yeah. comes from that short. It's from 1937. Really? Yeah. Huh. And so I, you know, there's. But I mean, all good stories have like some sort of basis and oh, something yeah. else that they come from, and, yeah. and this is no different. For sure. But as compared to all the stories that were being told in the '80s, you got to admit, I mean, people have to. Ghostbusters is one of the most unique. Oh, for, definitely, yeah. Because I mean, like most ghost stories are typically a scary story or a spooky yes. story or a demonic story. You know, like I feel like this is the first one that was like. Not, I mean, I, it had some yeah, legitimately it, scary moments. Yeah, and it's a comedy, but it's really it's it's dark. The basis of the story is how are we going to battle the ghosts? Yeah, not like all right, how are we going to run away from the ghosts or how are the ghosts going to take us over, things like that. And I thought that was, I mean, as an adult, I can appreciate it more now. But back in the day, it's like, oh, you got these cool lights, you got these cool weapons, you got this cool car. Oh, you know, I can put these guys in this little trap, like. Better I, than wands, for sure. Yeah. The original the, idea. Yeah, the magic sticks and, <laughs> and all that stuff. But, um, uh, the proton pack. The, the whole idea behind it, the fact that the movie is a ghost story about catching ghosts, it's, it's so unique. And, and they tried to incorporate like science, like real science yeah. into it, which was... It, it's not something that you... In the fantasy world, it yeah. was not done as often as it is now in like the Marvel Universe. Yeah. I mean, it's like they There's have an unlicensed realism. nuclear accelerator on the back. Like, what the yeah. hell? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, like, even since Ghostbusters, even with the popularity of Ghostbusters, like, has there been a movie about catching ghosts? No. I can only think of one. Yeah, but these are not popular movies. 13 Ghosts. <sighs> and I don't even know if that was necessarily about catching ghosts. There's been some ghost-catching movies, but the, the thing is is that you can't characterize them as ghosts because the movies center on this idea of demons mm. and a lot of these ones like or witches or so forth and, and nothing quite like the Ghostbusters were like you're housing them in some like containment facility or anything like that yeah but this whole idea of hunting a ghost and finding a ghost or a ghoul or whatever you want to call it it's been around in these movies but not quite the way Ghostbusters has done it yeah and not quite like as clever you know what I oh, mean oh definitely like, for sure because they really incorporated all these stuff just so cleverly you know with the proton pack and then like and not even like creating the idea of the proton pack or like the 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 trap or the or the the containment field, but like using that as part of the plot you know yeah. what I mean like finding ways to incorporate it excuse me into the plot and and you know it's one of those it's always one of those things that I've, I've always wondered about that lends the, the the nature of this movie lent itself so well to like a sort of serialized idea because even if you notice in the movie they go through like a couple different ghosts before they get to the main ghost right? yeah, and, yeah. Then, and then there's obviously like the bunch well, of no-name ghosts and well, everything yeah but not even like that a, it's like they, they they go through uh slimer their, the slimer their their first actual ghost and then the brothers they have their the uh no the brothers are in ghostbusters too well okay, okay but okay. they have their montage of them like their business actually picking up yeah and they're going through all the, the streets in new york just catching all these ghosts all these ghosts so the, it, it really shows them becoming these these rookie ghostbusters to becoming professional until the big daddy of them all comes, and you know, and you know, they're, they're obviously at the cartoon, but this idea that like you could like you could spend a, each episode on a ghost and you give the ghost back for story and all yeah. these other types of things like that, like, you, and obviously, I, I think that this whole syndication idea is not really a big right now in like you know live action prescripted drama, mm -hmm. uh, but it, the the idea of the Ghostbusters themselves, like it's like endless basically because oh, yeah. you're talking about a ghost, so you're talking about the history of humankind. You could yeah. bring back anybody. I mean, yeah. I know that they never really went there, but you could have episodes where you like have the ghost of Hitler. You have the ghost of Julius Caesar. You could, or whatever. Yeah. You could do those types of things. They yeah. never went there, of course, but you could. Well, or Jack the Ripper or whoever. Right? I mean, they're not going to do like those specific people, but I know in the video game, there's a scene where you're walking through a museum and you're, you end up fighting like ghosts from the Civil War, right? Awesome. And, and I think they're going to touch about that or touch on something like that in the new movie. 
Because the new the new movie, the villain is called Rowan. Rowan, which is interesting to me. And he can take over like people's people's like people's so bodies and stuff. One thing that I love about this idea is uh I don't know if this is the actual like, I don't know if Rowan is a person or if it's an entity or what, but Rowan ends up taking over the ghost that's in the Ghostbusters symbol. Really? Yeah. What? Yeah. And so it it he so he makes that ghost in the Ghostbusters symbol be a real ghost. So I, I don't know if 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 his physical manifestation just looks like that, or if he's actually taking over, you know, like that logo or whatever it is, yeah. and making it real. But there's, uh, especially from the new trailer, you get to see a little bit of a scene. With that's really it. cool. Yeah. And so like when I saw that, like I was just like, that that's awesome. That's so cool. This uh, and when they were originally making this first movie. You know, obviously, you know, there might have been some issues with some of the stuff going on when they were writing it, you know, because obviously John Belushi died during the writing of the script. And, yeah. You know, John Candy, Eddie Murphy weren't able to be in it. Uh, but there was another issue when they were filming it. They realized that there was a 1975 original film called The Ghostbusters. Okay. And they had to buy the rights, right? They were even thinking about changing the name. But I guess there's a scene where they're chanting Ghostbusters with a crowd of chanting. They couldn't change that, obviously. So yeah. they had to buy the rights. And this original this original movie. It's like a, it was like a it comedy, mo- situational comedy. Uh, was it a movie or was it a TV show? Is that the one? Because it's the one with the gorilla. It's yeah, it has a gorilla. Yeah, but they made a cartoon about that yeah. t- original TV show around the same time that the they Ghostbusters, made the real Ghostbusters yeah. cartoon as well. Which is, I know the big difference is the fact that the old one, this original one, was mm-hmm. the Ghostbusters. Ghost and Busters being two separate words. Yeah, our movie Ghostbusters, one word. Yeah. So they still had to buy the sort of they still had to buy the naming rights and so forth. Gotcha. Yeah. Because uh, I remember watching the cartoon for that Ghostbusters, and uh, I forgot what they called the gorilla. Tricked you or what? <laughs> no. Well, I mean, like, uh, it. Yeah. Well, you get ready to watch like, Ghostbusters, real Ghostbusters. But it's like you're, you're like, watching it, right? And it's like, okay, they got a gorilla, and it's got you got the short, chubby, fat guy that looks kind of like Stan, or uh, yeah, Stan's his name. What's uh Dan Aykroyd's character's name? Ray. Ray. Ray stands. Ray stands. My bad. Um, who looks like Ray, and then this sort of like tall, blonde sort of not geek, but like he looks like a blonde version of the animated uh, Venkman. You know, <laughs> like he's supposed to be like a kind of badass. And they got this giant gorilla, and they get in this car that that has a ghost face on it, and it can fly around and do all sorts of stuff. And the the uh, the main antagonist is like some weird like robot demon ghost sort of thing. You know, but it was more like it was more like. Scooby Doo, as opposed okay. to a Ghostbusters sort like of thing. Like the tone of it, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that, and and you know it did look like that. And I mean, to an extent, a lot of the Ghostbusters, I mean, especially the cartoon, the for early seasons were pretty dark and serious. But the lighter seasons, they made Slimer the main character, and they made yeah. him good. And, and you know, they really marketed it towards kids, especially well, the, the 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 you know the latter seasons. Like it was, it's weird because I there's a point in the Ghostbusters cartoon where they rebrand it as it Slimer goes from and the real Ghostbusters, yeah, it goes yeah. from the real Ghostbusters to Slimer and the real Ghostbusters. Like okay, because he was the one selling you know Slimer's ecto ecto cooler and. And they and had like Slimer, the Slimer the Spider, toys. like a sub show. So they like made it. I was reading this. They made like an hour long. It went from half hour to hour long show. But they didn't make the real Ghostbusters part of the show longer. They just made the the second half hour be like a culmination, some random culmination of like a bunch of like ten to fifteen minute long Slimer TV shows. Interesting. And Didn't so he had like his own little su- like spin off show. Yeah, and I know. I know. The popularity of Slimer and the real Ghostbusters cartoon is kind of what made Ghostbusters 2 happen. A, a, yeah. not only happen, but tone it down, not be as dark, and also include Slimer in it. Because Slimer the apparently. The thing about the Ghostbusters 2 movie is I feel like it's way darker than the original film in a lot of ways because How so? Vigo is scary looking. His whole idea is yeah. pretty scary, and the the ecto the the, the, pla- the ectoplasm that was underneath the the way yeah. they shot it was like really dark and. But it's not like it's not like hellhounds and, and giant. No, no, of dogs course not. Of course not. That 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 type of stuff. You know? Yeah, of course. And like in in Ghostbusters one, there were more. They made like, it less demonic, yeah, and, and there were more, more like, scary ghosts, like the yeah. library ghost, and uh, yeah, for sure. You know the the zombie that's driving the taxi. Like they had more scary ghosts in Ghostbusters, and it was more about learning about the occult and stuff like that. And this one was like this demon that's trying to take over a baby and even then he's not a ghost he's just like a painting that's alive yeah you know? so they yeah i know they made that but the way he looks is looks a lot more i mean maybe it's just the times because it was like five years later but it looks a lot more evil for sure to me yeah. the vigo character looks way more evil than gozer the gozerian uh, i mean she looked 
She scared she me. She had more a than... flat top dog. Come on. Exactly. Come on. Giant red eyeballs. <laughs> and then they're walking around the Statue of Liberty. Speaking of which, the Vigo the, apparently in the in the in the uh in the game, the Vigo painting's still around. Yeah. And it like talks to them and stuff. Yeah. And gives, it's like, a voice by Max von Sydow. Yeah. The yeah. same person who voiced voiced in the No. They said it was the same person who voiced in the movie. Was Max the voice of it? That's what they said. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, they but said yeah. basically all the people, most of the people, if not all of them. If they if they were in the game, it was the original actor. Okay, that voiced it. That's cool. Cause um uh yeah, cause I know Peck uh did his voice. Uh Janine was the voice. I mean, all the original Ghostbusters were the voice. Uh, Mal- uh Sigourney wasn't in it because she didn't want her, to do it. Her and character then by the time she it. decided to do it because she realized Bill was on in on it. Yeah, it's too late. They yeah. couldn't write her in. I think Alyssa Milano was in she, it. She's in a character in it. Yeah. yeah, she's another character. Um, but what's cool is like when you actually get to the point where you're hired on by the Ghostbusters and you're walking around the the firehouse. Yeah, like you get to just walk around like Slimer's like I don't know if he's stuck, but he's like in this little like uh, case mm-hmm. and he's just floating around and like he'll like you you know press the action button and he'll make little noises. But you go walk up to the painting Vigo that's like in the back in the garage <laughs> and there's like a tarp over it, right and I guess you could move the tarp and like he'll be like I'm still waiting for my time to sit on my throne of blood. You know, like he'll he'll you know voice off lines like Vigo that. the Carpathian. And then um, there's like other things. It's like you're going around. Like there's a computer screen that has um uh like because when you beat the uh, Ghostbusters NES game it says you know congratulations but like congratulations all spelled wrong and so like whatever that end title screen is like that's scrolling up in a monitor in the firehouse in the game um there's a bunch of like in in uh you know small kind of uh, uh links to that because I don't think Lewis Tully's in the game but I think you can see his Ghostbuster uh, suit. Uh-huh. Cause you know how he puts one on in in, in Ghostbusters two, like yeah. you go through where all the suits are and you can see like his name on one of the suits. Uh, it's just things like that. So let's get into the third um, Ghostbusters movie that never happened and yeah. the game. So I don't know if people know this, but the third Ghostbusters movie was supposed to be called Hellbent. Yeah, and it was actually supposed to take place in an alternate version of Manhattan called called Manhelton. Yeah, and where like you had like these hellish versions of everybody, and ultimately they were supposed to meet the devil. So to speak, finally, because okay. I mean, with these movies, you have to get bigger and better every ga- every movie, right? Right. So you have to do like, oh, we're gonna do go to the Gozerian, some demon, some Sumerian demon. Then we're gonna come to like Vigo the Carpathian, some like you know medieval spirit. Well, right. What are we gonna do next? We gotta yeah. get bigger and better. Well, yeah. We're gonna go to Satan. Okay, yeah. so we gotta go there. And and so <laughs> the interesting thing was is that it was supposed to be an older version of e- of the characters it was supposed to introduce a younger version of the Ghostbusters and pass on the and pass the proton on the packs. thing and there's it pass the proton packs and they were like run the the um the sort of administrative side of the Ghostbusters business yeah and they were but they weren't they were too old to really do all the stuff I mean they're still old now I even mean, if they did the yeah. movie now which is a thing that they could still do and they felt like they could put some stuff in this movie that they kind of left out some of the previous movies and like make it a little bit more adult themed i guess okay. was the idea and but ultimately they ended up making the game and the game wasn't completely the script but at least the second half of the game yeah. is thought to be heavily taken from the original script okay which is actually cool because the first the second half of the game is actually a really cool story yeah cuz there's a point where you're going through what was it a graveyard you're going through somewhere and like a, a portal to a sort of. Um, Suppose there's like a mausoleum that appears in the park or something, in like yeah. Central Park or something. Like yeah, that. and you it, have to I, go I, and fight them. It's I don't fight. I won't, I don't want to say it's like the demonic. I, I couldn't even tell you who the final. It's called, the guy named boss Evo Shanton or Evo. Evo Sh- Shandor. Shandor. There you go. Yeah, he was mentioned. He's supposed to be in the first movie originally. He, I think he's mentioned in Ghostbusters two. When okay. they're in the bookstore and they're talking about, um, I think they mentioned he's like a okay. So Evo. Evo Shandor, from what I understood in this game, he was supposed to be a like a person who dealt with the occult. Yeah, and he worshipped the Gozer, the Gozerian. Yeah, right? it was was a Sumerian god, and he had like a bunch of artifacts from Gozer. And I think there was a thing where the Melissa Milano character was like a she ultimately ended up being his daughter. Uh, but was it his direct daughter? I thought it was like a granddaughter. Uh, descendant. In the blood, yeah, in the blood line. Yeah. And they had like some sort of, uh, uh, what do I call it? Like a... Because uh, she got possessed. She got possessed by him and she did some stupid things obviously because of that. But there was an exhibit at a museum yeah. with all the Gozer, the, Go- the Gozer's, a bunch of like artifacts from Gozer, the Gozerian. Yeah. And... That's where she got. Uh, she, that's where she got taken over, and so they had to go to try to like rescue, like kill the kill uh, Evo, I, Evo, but obviously not kill her. Yeah, it's like rescue her type thing. Yeah, and they ended up going to like some mansion that was in the middle of some lake or something like. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, and I remember um, uh, it's the power of Evo Shandor 
and all the artifacts of Gozer. And I don't know if it was like a sort of like a Gozer and, and Ghostbusters sort of uh, thing because there's a lot of, um, like not Slimer, but those Slimer type ghosts came back. Um, uh, Stay Puff, the Marshmallow Man, yeah. goes back and you have to fight him. And he's essentially the boss of the first level. Which was, I thought was cool because if you made that movie... The, if you made that story the movie, you couldn't include Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. You couldn't, re- I mean, you could maybe put Slimer in at a cameo, but yeah. you couldn't make him a major part. And you couldn't do all these things that like are homages to the original movies because people are going to say, well, you went to the well, or it doesn't really fit, or we're just trying to, right. you know, people say, well, you just jam that stuff in there just so that you could make, put it in the trailer or something like that. Yeah. But with the video game, it's a new medium. You, you're, you're going to uncharted territory, and peop- you can put all that stuff in there because it's a game. It lasts ten over ten hours. But not right? only that, it, like it, the, the big thing about that is it's it's just like having Darth Vader be the first character. Exactly. And start, like it puts you in his shoes. It puts you in the shoes of fighting the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Yes. Something and, and that we haven't experienced before. Well, in a much better way than it did with the NES game. Yeah. Which is hot, total hot garbage. But <laughs> um, and that's the, that goes the the Ghostbusters the video game the 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 latest one that they had is absolutely fantastic. It got really high ratings. I, I loved it. It was uh, and I remember seeing the tech demo for it, and it was it was a much different um, uh, much different game. It was I remember it was being developed by Zootfly, and I I I want to say it was heavily inspired by Lost Planet. Where like you were walking like the the Ecto one was now like a Dodge Magnum and like rather than using the, the traditional proton packs they had like bigger proton packs but like you would walk around and um, like the entire landscape was destructible so like if you were blasting like a building a building it would eventually crumble if you just sat there and blasted it all day and it looked really really cool and and they kind of scraped scrap that in favor of of what we had with this game but it was really awesome be, you know, just you know being able to walk around and and use the proton pack in an actual proper way um making sure you're not crossing the streams um using the different tools of the ghostbusters to be able to uh locate and find these ghosts and then um if you did too much damage you get dinged uh money but if you you know, caught enough ghosts you would earn enough money um you could buy upgrades for your proton packs and they had different modes for them so like in from Ghostbusters 2 to now, uh, the team was able to develop different ways and different weapons and different modes to help capture ghosts because it, they started to learn that some ghosts were able, like, they couldn't be caught just by the proton beams. Like, they needed a specific type of, uh, you know, scientific, uh, you know, creation in order to be able to capture them or at least weaken them in order to get you to be able to capture them. Yeah, I thought, I mean, the game is set in 1991. So. I That's like not that. too long after Ghostbusters 2, right? I think Ghostbusters 2 was 89. Yeah. So it's set like a couple years later, which yeah. I think is really cool because obviously then you have the whole Vigo like talking about the future that has that we know has happened, but that they don't know has happened. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. But then always, I always see like this idea that it's not that much far removed from the second movie. So you could have not modern technology, but you could infuse some of it yeah. in there to make it believable to like, you know, obviously facilitate some of the stuff that you want to do in the game. Yeah. You know, in terms of, oh, we have something, because you want to show something you've never seen before, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. 